Hey, are you still carving your pumpkins? That is so old school. But don't worry, because today I will teach you how to laser engrave your pumpkin using Xtool software so crisp and clean that your neighbors will be jealous. Hi everyone, this is Max from Noisy Hearts Creations. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe because there will be a lot of value in my videos. And here's a couple things we're gonna need for today. Your laser, a pumpkin, a laptop or a PC, and a digital file, but you can get those directly in Xtool Studio or Xtool Creative Space or XCS. Now, when we have all those things ready, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up our software. In this case, I am using my Xtool Studio, or if you're still using Xtool Creative Space or XCS, it would be pretty much the same thing. Xtool Studio is just a newer version of software that Xtool announced uh, recently, and it has some few features, as well as an ability to connect to their new CO2 laser P3. But uh, if we have a quick look at all the lasers that Xtool makes, there's pretty much all of them up here. This pumpkin engraving technique will work on pretty much any of those machines with the exception obviously of Metal Fab, Apparel Printer, and the F2 Ultra Single because this is just a MOPA laser. So in other words, you would need a diode laser or a CO2 laser. So all the other ones should work. So if you have one of them, you should have no problem doing what we're gonna do right now. In my case, for this specific example, I'm gonna be using my F1 Ultra. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite. If you guys have not seen it yet, yet please check it out. And right now, Xtool is running some good promotions in them, so you can get it relatively inexpensive, but this is a very, very versatile machine. So I'm gonna connect to mine. Mine's already connected, as you can see. So here's what we're gonna do. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the image we're going to engrave. And in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to go to, but well, you can, by the way, you can get it pretty much anywhere. You can get yours from Canva. You may have hand drawn something yourself and put it through your computer. Uh, I'm, I'm not that talented. I'm just going to take somebody else's image and adjust it the way I want it. So in my case, I'm just going to go to the elements section and I've actually already picked what I was going to do. And in this case, I do like the Raven. So I am from Maryland and Baltimore Ravens is our football team. Unfortunately, we lost today, but hey, it is what it is. Um, right away in X2 Studio, it's going to give you a message asking you whether you want to scale it. Um, I'm going to choose yes, scale to fit because otherwise it is too big. And don't show for 24 hours if you'd like to, but let's just hit that scale to fit. So here's what we got so far. I'm gonna close this out of the way. This is obviously way too big for what we're trying to engrave. But I'm gonna to explain to you what we're gonna do next and it's gonna be one of those things that will help you get really good at engraving pump pumpkins or anything else like this. There are two different types of um, files or images I'd say that you can work with. Uh, in this case, it is literally an image or bitmap image, and it tells you this right here, top right. Now, the other one is a vector image. A vector is basically used for fonts and other more simple forms of images. And a bitmap image, like, in, like this one here, would be used more likely for photos. We're not trying to engrave a photo on a pumpkin. There's no need to. So all we need to do is a very simplistic image with basic shapes and easy to engrave. But how do we convert this into a vector image? Easiest way to do it is we can go to edit and we can hit trace. And as you can see, there's a fine blue line right now. The computer just traced our image. So we're gonna hit save. While you can't see right now what's going to happen if you grab it, look at this. We just have an identical outline of our image. Let's just make it a little smaller so we can see what's happening. 
I'm gonna make this one smaller and I'm gonna make this one about the same size. So, but we're not gonna engrave it just like this, not yet, because otherwise it'll just trace the line and it's not gonna be exactly what we're looking for, unless that's the look you're going for, then go for it. But as you can see, what we can do with this one, we can click it and instead of score, we're gonna change it to engrave. And tell me if you can see the difference right now, obviously besides the size, because I manually changed it, they're identical. As far as you know the difference, there would be no way for you to tell, except if you click it on this one, I'll tell you that's an image. And if you click on the other one, I'll tell you it's a vector. The big difference is how you set the parameters of how it's gonna be engraved. So if we look at the bitmap, it gives us an option. And again, this is a dual laser, so I have to choose whether it's a fiber laser or diode laser. And by the way, you cannot, as far as I know, you cannot engrave organic materials like pumpkin or something, or at least successfully cannot engrave it with fiber or MOPA lasers. So in this case, my laser gives me an opportunity to choose which light source I'm gonna use. And obviously I'm gonna use diode laser for that. But again, clicking on the image itself, it tells me dot duration, power range, and DPI. Uh, DPI is dots per inch. So how, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, how dense, I guess, your image is gonna be. So the more, the highest DPI, the more detail your image is gonna have. Again, this is more important for photos. We're not going for that level of detail. There's absolutely no need for us. Now, on the other hand, if we click the vector image, we're still using the blue light, but look at the parameters. The only two parameters we're left with is power and speed. And that's practically all we need. We just need to know how fast our laser is gonna go through this and how much, uh, well, I'm sorry, how fast is up here, how fast it's gonna go through this and how much power the laser source will produce. Uh, so how far it's gonna burn into our uh, pumpkin. And another thing, another thing we have here is lines per centimeter. Um, but actually the pretty cool thing within x uh, Studio is if you hover over those parameters, it'll tell you uh, visually what each and every one of them means. So it tells you how fast the laser goes through so the faster it goes through normally, the less, um, I'm sorry, I'm um, talking about the other thing. Uh, this is the power one. So the power, the uh, higher the power, the more pronounced the image is gonna be. And um, on, on, a wood, uh, on wood, for example, it's gonna burn further into your wood if you have higher power set. Speed is basically how fast your image will be created or your vector is gonna be created. And lines per centimeter is basically equivalent of the dots per inch on the other side. So in this case, what we're gonna do is, um, since we already have this image ready and we know the other one is the bitmap, we don't need it anymore. So we're just gonna get rid of it. So now in my case, my laser allows me to have a camera. So all I need to do is take a snap. Gonna do a second. Okay, so what I did, by the way, as you can see, I have uh, one of the, uh, one of small little jigs, just a round jig. It doesn't have to be anything specific. I mean, you can even use um, smaller items laying around, something that's not flammable, obviously, or preferably not flammable, uh, to keep your pumpkin from rolling. In this case, I happen to have this uh, round plate that I use as a jig for uh, other round objects and it works just fine for a pumpkin or anything round like that. So what I'm gonna do, let me actually go ahead and put my pumpkin in. So I just put my pumpkin back in there and now what we need to do is retake the image. Give it a second. Um, a laser, this particular one has a camera, some of the other ones like the D1 model and uh, I forget which one it is, S1 I think do not have it, but uh, you can just manually make those adjustments or do the focusing part. But either way, so we have our um, pumpkin sitting straight in the laser as you can see. At this point, the other big thing we have to do is measure the distance to it. Again, S1 can do it automatically. The D1, I believe you have to do it manually. Um, just make sure you have enough clearance because D1 is relatively low to the uh, table 
but you can lift it up on other risers and still do the pumpkin on it. Um, as always, just use your common sense and, and be careful. Now here with the F1 Ultra, that's another reason why I love this laser. All I need to do is click out of measure and there's gonna be two dots. It's gonna make some noise in a second. It's gonna align the dots and very shortly it should give us, um, should give us the parameters. So uh, let's fast forward. Okay, so my laser have uh, done the measurements and uh, looks like the height of my pumpkin is about 134 millimeters, which is somewhere around six inches, which looks about right. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna take my Raven and I'm gonna place it right in the middle up here. Now, Again, depending on the type of laser you use in this is as far as the parameters to be set specific to the F1 Ultra. If you're using a different type of laser, because all of them will have different parameters, especially gentry style lasers like M1, M1, M1 Ultra, S1, even the P2 and P2S. Um, so just probably do a test grid on a smaller piece or a smaller pumpkin or just at the side of this pumpkin to see what parameters make more sense for you as far as the power and speed. But uh, for my F1 Ultra, I do like using the following parameters. I go with the power of about 60, and I do set my speed at about 200 millimeters a second. And as far as the lines per centimeter, again, it all depends on what are you trying to accomplish? In my case, I do like to stick somewhere around 200 lines. So let's up it a little bit. So 200 lines, 60 power, 200 speed. And again, remember we have to use diode laser. So if you were to switch to fiber, if you use one of those machines, make sure you switch it back to diode. Now, pretty much all of these lasers we've talked about will have what's called either a camera or a framing feature. This one has both. So make sure before any project you're running, use framing feature. It is saved me so many times from uh, make sure, making sure I don't misalign things because things on the camera, again, camera uh, works a certain angle, but again, it is a camera. You have to just double check it. Uh, use framing feature will help you to make sure everything's properly aligned. So let's give it a go. So I hope you guys liked today's video. Stay tuned for more. And as always, keep creating. I'll see you next time.